Guys, I have played Scarlet and Violet already. Nintendo of Europe invited me and two other content creators to London to play the new upcoming Pokemon games, Scarlet and Violet. A quite exclusive hands-on preview session at the Pokemon Company International office. So I can now give you some exclusive insights into the game, the game mechanics, how it plays, how it runs and what it feels like. So the story goes like this. We arrive at this huge, impressive office building and we are greeted by Pokemon and Nintendo representatives welcoming us and taking us up the elevator to the third floor where we see this cool Pokemon Company International sign and a lot of Pokemon standees. Pikachus are everywhere and there is a corner with a ton of Pokemon plushies. There are framed Pokemon cards on the walls. Just overall a very beautiful office. And one thing that I find funny and genius is that all of their conference rooms were named after Pokemon. Like we started out at Bulbasaur and later we ended up having lunch at Charmander. <laughs> They also had the Pikachu model used in the creation of the movie Detective Pikachu. Just to mention something. Needless to say, it was a surreal and awesome time and being invited in the first place. And then we are taken into this secret preview games room where there's no filming allowed. No pictures, no filming, nothing. This was the secret room where we actually got to sit down, me and the two other YouTubers, and play this game. Now what we actually got to do in the game, we got to play the game freely for about an hour. We got to free roam the world, which is, as you may know, a open world game now. We got to explore all the features of the game on our own and later on we tried the multiplayer together. Now the following gameplay clips, they are from the preview build, which is the development build, which is not the final retail game and none of these clips are recorded by me they are sent to me as a b-roll to be worked into this video but i'm going to take you through all of the clips and tell you my experience with the game also first off here is what the character customization screen looks like where you can change your character's hairstyle and hair color and i felt like it was all well represented i personally see several hairstyles that i am happy with and the representatives in the room with us they made a point out of the fact that none of them are gender locked so you can mix and match whatever you like so everything is for everyone the character models look exactly as i would expect them to now in this next clip you can see what some actual gameplay looks like. Here you can see your character quick style take out Pokemon in the wild. And while I was playing I didn't recognize this as an actual thing. I see it now in the preview video that they sent over to me. You can throw out your Pokemon and you can quick style take out Pokemon. But I assume that only works for Pokemon that are weaker than yours is what I'm thinking. There is an XP share and you can see your party there on the side along with your first Pokemon in the party in the portrait down in the left corner. And as you can see some whooper slime dropped which brings me to something very interesting with Scarlet and Violet. You collect these Pokemon materials to later on create your own TMs which are the skills of the Pokemon. And I can see how this can be a fun grinding system trying to collect all the TMs because now you can make them on your own. All you have to do is grind the materials for them. Your Pokemon can also pick up your items for you which is a cute little addition. Here you can see more of the sheer scope of the world and I'm just saying that this video clip does not make the scope of the world justice. I rode around in the open world, it is huge, which makes me so happy because I love exploration in games and the mount is phenomenal. And here you can see the features of the camera in the game with a selfie mode included, of course. <laughs> the actual turn-based battles, they look like this, but unlike what we got used to from Pokemon Legends Arceus, this time you cannot run around and control your own character anymore. You only control the camera inside a battle. The mount that you get is to me one of the bigger features of the game. They felt great when exploring the open world. I mean, they jump really high, they climb and they can glide. This is what I imagine I will be doing a lot, just simply exploring, riding, climbing, gliding. I will definitely be doing that a lot and I will be looking out for Pokemon that I currently don't have and even hunt for some shinies, which they actually didn't confirm was in the game. I asked them here. 
are there shinies in this game? And they were like, they didn't say, they didn't tell me. <laughs> but I assume there is. I'm looking forward to finding secrets and items. I just love open world games. Bonding with your Pokemon is of course present and here you can see a rather beautiful shower scene of Belly Bolt. Just beautiful. Okay, so this is maybe one of the more surprising things to see, but cooking and food making is a big thing in this game. There's meals with buffs to them and you can like manually make sandwiches. It's not really my type of gameplay style. I don't think I will be doing this a lot, unless I really need the encounter buffs, which increases a specific type to be easier to encounter, I presume. Okay, since the game is an open world game, the gyms are spread across the entire world and the gyms can be tackled in any order. And I asked the representatives, the people that work there, are the gyms level scaled or are they level set? And they said they are level set. And then he said, which means in theory, if you start out the game, I mean, the game sort of leads you on the path to the easiest gym, but you don't have to follow what the game is telling you. You can, in theory, get a powerful Pokemon early on and tackle a gym that's supposedly harder for, <laughs> for you, I guess. You can do everything in your own way, in your own order, and that is gonna be so cool. Just like in Breath of the Wild. It's gonna be cool. This time around, the gyms has something called gym tests. And while we were playing, we tried one of the gym tests, which means we went up there and they said the gym test is a thing. We had to play hide and seek and find 10 Pokemon scattered around town. And that was the gym test. So this mixes up the gameplay style a lot. I feel like that is the direction that they're trying to go. They're trying to go into several sort of game styles in this game, making the gyms more fun. Uh, in earlier Pokemon games, all the gyms were also puzzles, but this time they are more on the outside of the gym, I feel like. But I think it changes things up a bit. Okay, so from what I gathered, the multiplayer part is gonna be very fun. Multiplayer is actually incredibly easy to set up. You set up your multiplayer and you get four numbers. You give anyone in the world these four numbers for the set amount of time that you have these four numbers, I mean, and your session is open. But in theory, this means I can go on my Discord, open my multiplayer, blah, blah, drop my four numbers and say, hey, who wanna join me? And three people can join my game with only four numbers. That is streamlining it, that is making things so much more easy and accessible. And I'm looking forward to that, dropping four numbers on my Twitter, let's say, come join my game sort of thing, and you can share them with anyone online. So up to four players can get together and do these special multiplayer battles against powerful Pokemon, which are marked on the map. Whereas if you all manage to defeat this powerful Pokemon, you all get to catch it. We actually tried this while we were playing in London, but we were so under leveled that we wiped. You can also ride around and walk around and traverse the world together in multiplayer and you can pose around for pictures. It's a very social world in this regard. I mean, hitting people up on Discord and talking and just roaming around the world while having a fun conversation. I'm looking forward to that. That is gonna be a fun time. We can hunt Pokemon together. Imagine if we see like a shiny Pokemon at the same time. Oh boy, it'll be war. I can definitely see us doing some game nights over on Discord, okay? And join my Discord down below. Fun. Now here is another really big feature. All Pokemon can have a Terra type, a separate type. Let's take Pikachu because why not? Everyone does that. He's an electrical type. This Pikachu can have a Terra type called Fire, Fire Terra type. In battle, at any time, this Pikachu can transform Terrestalize into his Terra form, Terra type. Which means that suddenly this Pikachu is a Fire type Pokemon with its weaknesses and strengths. And you can do this once per battle, and this changes up a lot of the tactics in the game. Now you have to catch a Pokemon with the specific Terra type, and if you are looking for, let's say, Pikachu with a specific Terra type, you're gonna have to find it. And that is gonna be a new rare collectible sort of thing in Pokemon, I feel like. All these combinations that you can suddenly mess around with. Here you can see the Fire Crown, and this Pokemon is already a Fire type, so 
if the terror type is fire also, it just makes the fire attacks even more powerful. Okay, so in this last clip provided, you can see the Pokemon Center, which now are like open stalls out in the world. Very convenient, and they also work as fast traveling points once you have discovered them. Okay, so my overall impression, the impression that I got when I went out of this secret room, <laughs> which we were not allowed to film in, was I want the game immediately, actually. Open world, so fun. I'm so looking forward to that. And the multiplayer and the terror type, like, and the mount. These are the aspects of Pokemon Violet and Scarlet that I'm looking forward to now. After I've had my hands on, the game felt great, like the controls of the character. I remember I especially liked the TM catalog menu. Every single TM has a little portrait with a Pokemon performing this TM. There is something just so clean about this menu and so fun about this menu that it makes me want to collect every TM in the game because it just looked so neat and tidy and I love collecting things in my video games. Now the Pokedex design, it was fun and it looked like books being put on shelves, if that, if that makes sense. I don't know if I have a, a clip of that, but I'm just describing what that looked like. Now about the graphics of the game, which I'm sure a lot of you are very interested in. Now I cannot say much about the graphics because they told us this is not the final retail version of the game. So, you know, never mind a lot of the details sort of thing. So the version that we played, it did not have a lot of draw distance. And I could see Pokemon far off in the distance, sort of chugging. But the gameplay felt good, the character controlled well, and overall colors and lighting and character models, they looked fine. There was no frame drops in the game from what I saw, and I really tried to look. The only thing that I noticed, like I said, the draw distance. That was noticeable, but otherwise good. So my verdict of the preview, it was so fun to be invited by Nintendo of Europe to this preview session with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in London. I have never been to London. I am making another video where I'm doing game hunting in London coming up really soon. So with this game, I feel like it is taking inspiration from Pokemon Sword and Shield and Legends Arceus and sort of mashing them together. And so now it is an open world Pokemon game with its great mouth that does it all. And seeing Pokemon around you in the world is exciting. I loved Pokemon Legends Arceus. You know that. I gave it 10 out of 10 on my channel. So I feel like this Pokemon game is going in the correct direction. And actually, guys, about some new Pokemons. I love the new Girafarig evolution. Do you guys remember this Pokemon? That is so clever. They're taking the tail and making it its hood. Loving this design. Also, I have a feeling that Belly Bolt is gonna be the new best boy. <laughs> so out of the new starters, I think I'm gonna go with the dinosaur, Fucoco, and I'm looking forward to riding around in this new region, the Paldea region, guys, with the new feature of terrestrializing and taking selfies with the people that I play with. So anyways, after the preview session, we got to hang around and have lunch together, have a chat with the people that work there. It was all a wonderful once-in-a-lifetime experience. I wouldn't have missed this for the world, and I'm so grateful that I got to be invited. I was shocked to say the least. Me? Who? Me? What? You know, even my sister said like, <laughs> oh my god, it's kind of embarrassing. She said, were you the best one they found for this? <laughs> You know, me being a sort of smaller channel, I don't know what they were thinking. Anyways, the full release of the game is on November the 18th, in a month's time. And then they gave us a goodie bag, Pokemon Violet, Scarlet, a Pokemon plushie, another Pokemon plushie, Pokemon hat, and a ton of Pokemon cards, like a bunch. Oops, let me know if I'm gonna have to look for some of the rarer ones. I got a shiny Togetic if that says anything. Here, even more, even more. They really spoiled us, okay? <laughs> now, thank you so much for watching. I am looking more forward to the game now. Thank you, Nintendo, and I hope you wanna subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna do a full review of this game when it's fully out, detailed review. So, thank you so much for watching. Thank, wait. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Hit like on my video even if you are on TV, and join the Discord and Instagram and Twitter. I will see you later.